My name is Yoad Nibo. I'm a producer, engineer, mixer. I work for Waves. I have been for a very long time uh, designing uh, plugins and other products. I wear two hats. One is the mixer, producer um, hat, which is my kind of main thing that I do. Um, and then I spend a week out of every month at the Waves headquarters um, purely designing plugins and working on, on software. I actually started as a guitarist, um, but it's funny because I had an electric guitar, but I didn't have an amp. So I was looking for ways to, to basically amplify the guitar. So I had, a, I had one lead, one guitar lead, which I cut the end of and I exposed the wires. And then I started <laughs> trying to, to find where to plug it, um, getting electric, electrocuted uh, along the way several times, connecting it to radios and tapes and, uh, and, and some whatever gear I could find. Uh, so, so basically the kind of musicianship um, went hand in hand with the engineering side of things. When I was 17, I did uh, an engineering uh, course for a year. And then I found myself working as an assistant in, in a studio, in one of uh, Tel Aviv's uh, leading studios at the time. I never planned on becoming an engineer. I, I was a musician and I already produced um, things and made beats and things like that. But um, I rationalized it to myself by, in the beginning, by not having to need to work with an engineer while I make music, but it, it turned out to be much more, much more than this uh, because I love engineering and I love the being very technical and, and understanding all the basics and of how things work and, and, and what makes things tick. Obviously it's the gear which is fascinating and exciting and all that, but I think it's the discipline, the studio discipline that was really important for me and this is what I took a lot from and I still use this discipline, this this very kind of basic linear way of looking at things and and after having worked till four in the morning every day, uh, getting back to work at at eight in the morning, start setting up sessions and drums and making coffee for like fourteen people in big sessions and things like that. I know that, that nothing is impossible, that I can do anything I set my mind to do, however difficult it, it may seem. And this is the one thing that I think that's the most, most important thing that really comes with, with this engineering. It's the, the commitment and the uh, attention to detail and, uh, and all that. I think it's extremely important. When I arrived in, in, in the UK, um, in the late 90s, there was still kind of a, a distinct role of a programmer. And although by that time I was mixing and I was, uh, I, I had a whole kind of career as, as an engineer, the programming role was really something that I felt very comfortable in doing because I was obviously very knowledgeable about uh, Pro Tools and um, and how to operate all the, the, the computer software uh, that was available at the time and the way they integrated with the, the normal kind of recording procedure. But also I'm kind of a synth freak, so, so I was very much hands-on with all the synths and uh, programming and, and all that. I knew Gilad, uh, one of the, uh, of the founders of Waves, since he was a sound engineer, because that's how he started as well. So I knew him from the studio scene. And he asked me to uh, basically test some prototype that they were working on. It's a, it was a hardware prototype of, um, of an EQ, six-band EQ, six-band uh, compressor and the limiter, which was the predecessor of Q the Q series, the L series, and the C series. It was in a hardware, it was like a funny box. It was a tr prototype, it wasn't even a product. I was uh, working in a studio late, it was winter, it was late at night, and there was a thunderstorm, and suddenly the whole 
uh, power came down for the whole block or something like that. The whole studio came down. And, uh, and when it got back up, this unit stopped working. It didn't turn on. And uh, actually, that was the end of that unit. There was, there was this one prototype and I managed to, to, to blow it. And I called Gilad and he came. It was like midnight, it was stormy. And Mayer, his partner and the, the, the other co-founder of Waves, came and they were like, ah. And, uh, and after that, they offered me a job. After 20 years of working at Waves, um, I don't know if I still have a kind of official title. Um, but what I do is I'm involved with, with all Waves products um, to some degree. Some, some products that, um, that I initiate, like HReverb that we've done recently, uh, that I had an idea for, for an engine for a reverb engine and that kind of kick-started the, uh, the whole project. It took about three years to, to make and I'm really proud of it. I think it's a really good reverb and I think I'm not the only one who, who says that, so it's fine. In the past five or six years we started working on uh, synthesizers and, and instruments and that's obviously something that I'm very heavily involved with the, with the design and um, this the, the, the sound, but I'm, I'm very much involved in, in the design and sounds of all, basically all Waves products uh, to, to a certain extent. So there's some, some products which are basically my babies and I lead the, the development and, um, and obviously the sonic signature uh, of these products. Some, some of them like, I don't know, Super Tap Delay and some, some early ones as well. You know, it, it countless numbers, number of, of plugins that I'm involved with in different kind of uh, ways, basically. The, the conference lecture uh, is going to be about control, not control surface, but the, the, the actual concept of control. And it's about control the situation or be controlled by the situation and my perspective is obviously to be control over all the elements uh, of of any setup of any situation that you may find yourself in whether it's producing mixing setting up uh, drum mics um, programming sounds on a synth whatever whatever you find yourself doing uh, when you're in control you have a lot of room for creativity um, and being in control doesn't mean that you lose spontaneity. Um, I think it's, it's actually the opposite. So the more you're in control, when you work on, on a desk like that and you have a hundred tracks to mix, if you don't do it methodically and in a linear way and acknowledge the fact that you actually sit here and you control the situation um, and that no matter what happens this no one can take that control away from you that's when magic happens because you can then relax and uh, and open up for for um, unexpected things in terms of creativity and uh, and news and inspiration.